Hey, folks, my guest today is Ring. She's the founder of Llama Life. After working in advertising in New York City, she taught herself to code by watching YouTube videos, then built and bootstrapped Llama Life as a solo founder to 700 paying customers, which we love. It has since raised a pre seed round from high profile investor Jason Cassianis. Uh, let's jump into the story. Marie, you ready to take us to the top? Sounds good. Thanks for you having me. The life. You had the life. You're bootstrapping <laughs> up paying customers. Then you say, okay. Okay, fine. We're gonna let them in. We're gonna let the we're gonna let the evil in. Not always evil, but we're gonna let the VC in. Why change paths? Yeah, so you're right. So I bootstrapped it to 700 paying customers. Um, that was kind of the original plan, but it was a bit it was a bit serendipitous. So I was building in public on Twitter, and someone from Jason Calacanis's team saw Llama Life, and they bought the product. They really liked it, and they DM'd me on Twitter. And they said, hey, we can see that you're bootstrapping. Have you ever thought about joining an accelerator program? And, you know, I had thought about an accelerator in the past. I've actually done a few startups before Llama Life. And I did actually go the VC path um, a long time ago. Not a huge amount. It was a very, very small check at the time for a different business. And, you know, I'd kind of been through that experience. And this time I thought I'd bootstrap it. But because it was Jason Calacanis, a huge angel investor, he invested in Uber and Calm and a lot of other huge businesses very early on, I thought, you know, I'd take the conversation, I'd take the call. And we had a call. I ended up, like, applying for their accelerator program. It's called the Launch Accelerator. It's a three-month program in the US. I'm based in Australia, but because everything's remote right now, I was able to take part. And I went through that program. It kind of helped me think about Llama Life in a much bigger way. You know, I think that's what accelerator programs are for, right? It's how do you grow bigger? How do you how do you grow quickly? How do you scale quickly? And I really like the vision that kind of evolved over time. And that vision is to help people achieve calm, focused productivity. Because nowadays there's kind of this false notion that we need to be, you know, working crazy hours, crazy busy, working all the time. And I just don't believe that's the way forward. I think we can still achieve productivity, but do it in a calm way and a way that's good for our mental health. And that's kind of what emerged out of the accelerator. And I really want to see if I can make that vision come true. And as a solo bootstrapped founder, I thought it was going to be more difficult. So I ended up raising money after the accelerator program uh, close around very, very, uh, not actually not long ago, like um, two months ago, two months ago. So uh, we're raise? in, I raised 690K uh, USD. So that and, will give us a, yep. And so I was going to say, and what was Launch's model? Do they take 6% for 150 or do they take equity? Yes. So they take 6% for 100K USD. Okay. So was that part of the 690? No, that's on top of the 690. Okay. Yep, so, before so, the, so before the 690, really? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess with the accelerator, you know, the idea is to be able to let you work full time on it. So that's kind of what happened, right? As a solo founder, I took the 100K, gave away 6%, was able to work full time on my business during the accelerator program, which was three months. And then after that, you know, at the end, you do demo day. So with demo day, um, actually didn't raise any money from demo day, but it gave me some momentum and it let me practice doing my pitch like hundreds and hundreds of times. And I ended up raising money after that. But, Mm -hmm. you know, as you know, raising money takes a while sometimes. So I think it took about five months in total from, you know, when I first started to when the money actually hit the bank. Mm -hmm. Um, But the And what did you end up? I mean, this is a, this is a tricky time, obviously. Well, I mean, it sounds like you closed before this sort of rocky period started past month or so. (laughs) Just before. Um, Yeah. 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 So you rate, obviously the accelerator, 100K, 6% is what a 1.6 million valuation. What valuation did you use on the seed round? Yeah, on the seed round, so it was a pre-seed round. Um, okay. So it was two point seven five million pre pre money. Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this: you love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over two thousand eight hundred seven interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation this year. 
Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your founder path dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity. And red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real-time valuation data points founders share with us on the show. So traction, 1.2 million. Seed round, 3.7 raise. They sold 22% of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations. Or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. Yep, yep. So call it yep. like 2.5 2. posts, something like that. Uh, 3 point, I would say like 3.4 oh, oh, posts. 3 point, sorry, sorry, 2.5 yeah. pre. 2.75 pre, so it'd be oh, like, oh, oh. yeah, 2.75 2. pre, so it'd be 3 point. Yep. I can't do the math. So it's too early. I'm trying to decide. Seven, I'm like, trying to figure out how much you sold. You sold. You sold like 15 percent, something like that. Um, fifteen. Probably more like twenty. I think by the end of yep. it. Yeah. Yep. Which is which is okay for a pre seed. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you do lose. It's interesting. We're talking about an app that's sort of about calm, but the second you raise, you go to an accelerator and you go on the VC path. I mean, it is on. It is growth at all yep. costs. It's like you've got mm -hmm. to hit it, and if you don't, your your optionality is like nil. It's very small. So, I mean, yeah. I guess talk to me about before you made that switch, 700 customers, where were you in terms of revenue from those customers? Yeah. So the revenue is still very small with the 700 because, you know, originally when Llama Life started, it was a free app. Um, so it's a web app. And then we kind of went through different pricing models, right? So the first price was like $4 one-time payment. And that was it. Um, it's it's grown over time, so it's now at fifty dollars annual subscription. So that's quite a big difference. Um, so when we we're at seven hundred paying customers, half of those half of those seven hundred were just one time payments. So it's kind of hard to to kind okay. of work that out. But I can tell you where we're at now. So we're at sure. nine hundred and fifty paying customers. So it's not okay. that far off from where the seven hundred was, and the MRR is at eighteen about eighteen hundred. Yep. MRR, um, US dollars, but we only started charging subscriptions about a year ago yep, because yep. before before that, it was just one-time payments or it was like free. Yep. No, this makes perfect yep. sense. So, yep. so um, $1,800 per month today, $2,100, sorry, $21,000 run rate annually. And that was up from about a year ago. What were you up from? I mean, are you, you probably are growing like crazy, right? Growth rate wise. Growth rate wise, we are growing twenty percent month on month gross MRR. Yeah, yeah. Now look, anyone yeah. listening is going to go, yeah, but she's going from a dollar to six bucks at six hundred percent growth. But still, growth is growth, right? So growth what, is growth. <laughs> I, I think. I think the other thing to think about is that you know there's different growth stories to tell, and it depends on the type of business. So we're obviously a we're a B two C product. We're a consumer product. There's different ways to look at it, and actually, we're we're actually doing this right now, thinking about this because. You know, when you when you raise money from a VC, you need to report monthly, right? You need to provide your your, you know, what did you do every month? Your highlights, your lowlights, what's your run rate, what's your revenue, what's your growth? And we're kind of thinking about like what's the story at the moment? Is it a revenue story that we want to tell? So we do grow 20% month on month, or do we want to tell more of a customer engagement story? 
because it's a consumer app. And I'm actually leaning toward the latter. So right now, um, a big heavy focus is analytics. Like how can we figure out what our engagement metrics are? Like are we going to be are we going to be tracking things like monthly active users? Probably more appropriate to do weekly active users or daily in this case. And you know what's the engagement? Um, Llama Life is a tool that helps people focus. So one of the things that we are looking at is maybe we look at number of focus minutes per month. Like, is that the metric that we want to track? And is that the metric that we want to grow every month? Um, Because once you start raising money, the goal is obviously, you know, can you put your business in a good position in order to raise the next round in 18 months? Like, can you put it in 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 an attractive position for investors? And is that position about telling a growth story on revenue or a growth story around customer engagement? Mm-hmm. So I'm actually leaning toward the customer engagement. I think a lot of consumer apps focus on that versus revenue on the early days. But Mary, it, so here's you're sort of in this very interesting spot because it's almost a problem that you have revenue because then people want to harp on you about how low the revenue is when really you should just eliminate the revenue and just focus on user and engagement growth, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's no, you, you're you spot on because I think when you're bootstrapping, revenue is all, it is like oh, the, the number 100%. one focus. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm yeah, only and that saying was, this because you chose to raise. My advice no, would be no, very exactly. different if it was, if you were still bootstrapping. Exactly. And that's why this is interesting because when I was bootstrapping, that was my number one focus right and there was actually a paywall on llama life so llama life was a free trial and then it was completely paywalled um and to access anything you had to pay for it that was the bootstrapped model and i think that makes a lot of sense for bootstrappers especially if you're a solo bootstrapper because you know do you want to support a large number of customers that are on free plans or do you want to support a smaller number who are actually paying for your product and are going to sustain your business over time. So that's kind of the bootstrap way. And that's kind of where I was thinking before I raised money. Now it's a little bit different. You know, we are thinking about potentially adding a free tier. So that will open things up a lot. We have a lot of students using Llama Life and they always email me saying it's too expensive for them. We have a lot of people, it's it's global from day one. So we have a lot of customers in um, countries like India as well. I get a lot of emails from people from India saying, Hey, the exchange rate is prohibitive. You know, yeah. in terms of yeah, us the using point, this. The point so being, like, though, like the the, the this is not the if you're going to go build a hundred million dollar revenue business, it's not going to be probably from selling today five dollar per mm-hmm. month plans to That's students right. in India. You know what I mean? So That's it's right. interesting. So I guess why haven't you pulled down the pricing totally? I mean, why is it still on the site? Are you nervous? Uh, well, actually, as I said, we're about we're thinking about introducing a free tier. So mm-hmm. look out for that. Um, no, yeah, I mean you, you're on the you're on the right track. That's that's kind of what we're thinking at the moment. We just uh, mm-hmm. we're in the process. In the process, yeah, because that way that way your next round you don't have to defend some VC going. Well, yeah. you don't have two million bucks of ARR yet, and then yeah, you don't have to worry about right. saying, well, we're not focused on ARR. We're focused on engagement metrics, and look at how good our engagement metrics are. Yep. Yep. Interesting. No, that's right. That's the interest. It's it's very very interesting, and, and pricing is such a tricky thing. And I think the main thing is to think about like what, what is your number one goal, right? What is the thing that you're? What is the metric that you're working toward, and that you need to hit, and then build the pricing around that, whether it's a free tier or it's a paywall yep. or you know, etc. How many folks are on the team today, full time? There's just two at the moment. So uh, I I recently hired someone at the start of. This year, so that's you know we're in May 2022. So she joined um, in January. She's focusing more on content, community, doing partnership deals, and I'm doing dev, design, business, everything else, pretty much. But we are hiring. We are looking for another dev, so yeah. full stack dev to kind of take some of that time, uh, alleviate some of my time as well. So if anyone's uh, looking to join an awesome business, uh, there you go. Llamalife.co. <laughs> and Marie, if I ask you today what churn is, how would you answer that? Yeah, so churn has typically been quite low, four to six percent. That said, um, this month that's has monthly, been monthly, month, monthly okay. MRR churn, four to six percent. That said, this month has been a little higher. So we're now around eight percent. And I actually tweeted about this a couple of days back. Um, what happened was. Um, it's been one year since I launched subscriptions. So the annual subscriptions, the first annual subscription has started to tick over. 
this exactly this month in May. So we started to see some of the original customers um, lapse. There's yep. a couple of reasons for that. I mean, there's pro- there's going to be some natural attrition. That's normal. But there's also a couple of other things. So um, credit cards have been expiring and people haven't renewed them. And then we have, we've we had a lot of problems with payments in India because, as you know, like recent regulation in India has really cracked down on uh, subscriptions. So that's been hitting us quite um, badly this month. But it's around 8% MRR churn at the moment. But that's high mm-hmm. for us. Yep, understood. Understood. Interesting. Well, listen, we're rooting for you. Thanks for making time for us. In the meantime, though, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's the last book that you read? Oh, last book. Uh, well, I'm reading Atomic Habits right now. So I guess that's, that's in progress. Yeah. Number two, is there a founder you're following or studying? Um, you know, I because I started in the bootstrap world, I'm following a lot of the indie hackers. I love Damon Chen. Uh, he's building testimonials, basically connecting collecting testimonials for B2B businesses. Yep. That's a good one. Number number three, what's your favorite online tool for building Llama? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, aside from Llama Life itself, um, I really like uh, CleanShot. It basically lets you take, yeah, CleanShot. It lets you take screenshots on your Mac. I probably use it like 20 times a day. It's amazing. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? About seven. Okay. That's good. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? Uh, single, no kids, one dog. Not, and one dog, that counts. That counts. <laughs> yeah, All right. yeah. And Marie, do you mind me asking how old you are? Um, I am actually in my 40s. Oh, amazing. Okay, great. So we'll say yeah. 40. The reason yeah. I ask is because take us back to your 20-year-old self. What's something that you wish that she knew? Oh, God, my 20-year-old self was a mess. Um, something I wish she knew, I would say um, just stress a little bit less, you know, because I never knew what I wanted to be. I would just say, like, don't worry, you'll figure it out. Guys, stress less. It makes sense. She's been on LlamaLife.co, a B2C app that helps you stay calm, stay productive, and stress less. She has 950 customers on the platform today, about $1,800 of monthly recurring revenue. She's just getting going, which we love. Trying to figure out, should I have a paywall? Should I not? What should the free tier look like? She's got plenty of runway to figure it out, though. Just raised 690000 bucks and a pre-seed round at a $3.4 million post-money valuation. So we'll see what she does next. Mary, thanks for taking us to the top. Great. Thank you for having me. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live, and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.